So today I'm talking about a P0300 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P0300 code? Well, it's a random or multiple cylinder misfire detected. And what does this mean? Well, basically, each cylinder inside of the engine, it needs to have the correct amount of fuel and air going into it. And then at the right time, the spark plug is going to send out a spark so that ignites the whole mixture. And it's going to send the piston down, which is going to turn the crank. And this is going to keep the whole engine running. But when you get a misfire code, something's gone wrong with this. Either something's off with the fuel delivery or the air going into the engine. Or for some reason, the spark isn't igniting the mixture. And so it's going to have to be troubleshooted. No, why? And one thing to note about a P0300 code is that this code can be kind of difficult to troubleshoot since it can be caused by many different things. And for this reason, be sure to pay attention to any other codes that you might be getting because they can help point you to what the problem is, whether or not it's a fuel problem or if it's a sensor problem or anything that can help you find out what the problem is. Because keep in mind, a P0300 code can be difficult to troubleshoot sometimes. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0300 code? Well, the first thing that could cause this is ignition system problems. And this could be something like a bad spark plug, bad spark plug wire, or a bad coil. The next thing that could cause this is something's gone wrong with the fuel delivery. And so this would be something like a weak fuel pump, a clogged up fuel filter, a bad injector or something along those lines. Another possible cause is something's going on with the air going into the engine. And so this would be something like a clogged up air filter or a damaged hose or something that's blocking the airflow going into the engine. But if the air is blocked for some reason, then that could cause issues. Also, if there's any kind of vacuum leak around the engine, then that's gonna cause issues. And this would be something like a bad hose or a bad gasket or something like that. But a vacuum leak can also cause this problem. A bad sensor could cause this problem, like a bad mass airflow sensor or manifold absolute pressure sensor. A clogged up exhaust can also cause this issue if the exhaust is damaged for some reason or if the catalytic converter is all clogged up and the engine's having to work to push the exhaust out, then that can also cause problems. And so how would you go about troubleshooting a P0300 code? Well, the first thing to do is check to see if there's any other codes. Because if there is any other codes, it's going to help point you to what the problem is. For example, say you were also getting a P0103 code, mass or volume airflow A circuit high. Then this would point to an issue with the MAF sensor or with the air going into the engine. So in this case, you'd go check out the MAF sensor, do some tests on it, be sure it's working good, things along these lines. But the first thing to do is check to see what the other codes are. Also be sure to check your intake air filter because if that air filter is really dirty and really clogged up, it might be blocking the airflow going into the engine and that's going to cause problems. You can also try to locate which cylinders are not firing. Again, you're going to get other codes that will point to which cylinders are misfiring. So for example, if you're also getting like a P0301 code, cylinder one misfire detected, then that would be cylinder number one, P0302, cylinder number two, P0303, cylinder number three, and so on. But if you could find which cylinders are misfiring, then you could go test those cylinders. So you could check them for spark. There's some different ways you go about checking for spark. One method is to use an inline spark tester tool, where basically one side goes on the spark plug and the other side goes to the coil. And then you start up the engine and you check to see if there's any spark inside of here. Because if that cylinder is getting sparked, then you're going to see it light up inside of the little tool. If you test those cylinders that are misfiring and you are getting sparked, then the next thing to do is to go check the fuel delivery. And this would be things like the fuel pump, the fuel filter, the injectors, and things along these lines. And again, there's some different ways you go about testing for this. One method is to do a fuel pressure test. And basically, you get a fuel pressure gauge. You attach it to the fuel rail, and then you start up the engine, and you check to see what the pressure is. And every vehicle runs a little different on the fuel pressure, so you have to look up your rated pressure. But for example, say your engine's supposed to be running at like 60 PSI, but you do a fuel pressure test, and it's running at 50 PSI, then you know there's some kind of issue there, that the fuel pump is weak, or you got a clogged up fuel filter. And so you can go check those components. If the fuel pressure is correct, if it is running at 60 PSI, like it's supposed to, then you'd move on to testing the injectors. And again, there's some different ways to go about testing the injectors. If you have a known good cylinder on the engine that you know is working, you could swap it out with that cylinder and see if the problem follows. You can also test these with the multimeter. But the next thing to do would be to test all the fuel delivery components and be sure they're working correctly. Another thing that could cause this and to go and check is going to be the catalytic converter. If it's real old and it gets all clogged up, then it could cause issues because the engine is going to have to work really hard to try to push the exhaust out. Again, usually if this happens, you're going to get other codes. So you get something like a P0420, catalyst system efficiency, below threshold, bank one. There's some different ways to go about testing the catalytic converter. There's some good YouTube videos on that. But the next thing you're going to check is going to be for a clogged up exhaust. 
And another thing that could cause problems is going to be a vacuum leak or an intake air leak. And basically all the air should be going in through the throttle body that's going into the engine. And if the air somehow is going around this, so like there's a loose hose or a bad gasket or something like that, so air is going in around the throttle body, then that's going to cause problems and it could cause a P0300 code. There's some different ways to go about trying to check for a vacuum leak. You can't just go around and try to check all those hoses and check to see if any of them look like they're damaged or anything disconnected or anything like this. But it can sometimes be hard to try to find a leak in the intake. And so one method is the smoke machine method where you use a smoke machine and you feed smoke into the intake. And then wherever the smoke comes out, you know where the leak's at and then you're able to fix it. So there's some low-cost smoke machines on like Amazon or eBay. I'll put a link down below if you need to check one out. Another method that some mechanics use is they'll use a spray like starter fluid or something like that. And they'll start up the engine and then they'll go around and wherever they think the leak's at, they'll spray the spray. And if the engine idle changes, then they know they found where the leak's at and they're able to fix it. So like I said, there's some different methods to try to find a vacuum leak. But the next thing to go and check for would be a vacuum leak. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing an engine with the P0300 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.